guys, so this is Teacher Chris again. So I'm very sorry that this video is kind of late because the previous video that I made somehow got corrupt corrupted so I decided to make a new one. And also, before we move on, let me welcome you to our online class Fundamentals of English course code E21101 and this is our day 7. So, let's do a quick recap of what happened last week on our week 3. So, last week we talked about lots of, a lot of, and a lot. The differences and similarities and how we use them. And also, we talked about countries and nationalities. We did, uh, we did some listening exercises as well on that. And also, we talked about countable and uncountable nouns. So this week, I hope you are still high on going to our classes. And also, I'm so glad seeing some of your, uh, some of your classmates and some of you guys were um, there on our um, summer classes. And I'm so glad that I was able to teach you, although for only one day, because Teacher Chris was kind of sick this weekend, uh, this past week. And also, um, I'd like to request you guys to go through our day-to-day -day, uh, things to do on our Google Classroom. Please make sure that you did uh, number one before you move to number two, three, and four. So please, that's how you do things in our Google Classroom. Check always your notification in your Google Classroom because if you have some notification there, it means that there is something important coming from me or coming from our school. Alright, so these are the objectives for week four. Objective number one, speak and write properly to describe things around the campus. And objective number two, use comparative and superlative adjectives to describe things. Hello you guys, so this is Teacher Chris again. I'm back. So this is Fundamentals of English and online class with me. So what do we have for today? Let's try to take a look. Alright, so this week we're going to talk about my school and also some helpful words and phrases to help you or to aid you with your communication both in written and speaking English. Okay, so we're also going to talk about adjectives and uh, word opposite words and also some comparatives and superlatives part one. So what else? So this week, and also, as mentioned in the earlier video, these are the objectives for the week. So if you want to go through with that, so please read them so that you know specifically what we are going to learn for this week. Now, adjectives. So what are adjectives? Let me just minimize this and move our camera right over here. So adjectives are words that describe the qualities or state of being of nouns. Again, read with me. Adjectives are words that describe the qualities or state of being, or states of being for that matter, of nouns. So we have some example here. So we have enormous, we have dog-like, we have silly, we have yellow, we have fun, and fast. So also, they can describe the quantity of nouns by saying many, few, millions, and a single number, like 11, or 3, or 4. All right, so things like that. Now, adjectives, please read with me. Adjectives are words that modify. When we say modify, it means to describe nouns. All right, so adjectives do not. Take note of that. Adjectives do not modify verbs or adverbs or other adjectives. So please remember that. Adjectives only modify nouns. Now, in these sentences, the adjectives are easy to spot because they come immediately before the nouns they modify. So aside from being color, so colorful right over here, so the reason of that, because they come before the noun they modify or the noun that they describe. So let's take a look at our first example. Read with me. Margot wore a beautiful hat to the pie eating contest. Again, let's read. Margot wore a beautiful hat to the pie eating contest. So the adjective is beautiful, describing the noun. After it is hat. Very good. Now, second example, let's try to read. Furry dogs may overheat in the summertime. Again, furry dogs may overheat in the summertime. 
Now, furry here is our adjective that describes the noun. Very good, dogs. Now, let's try to go to our next sentence over here. Please read with me, guys. My cake should have 16 candles. Again, my cake should have 16 candles. Now, the noun, the noun over here is candle or candles. And the adjective is here, the number 16. Very good. Now, let's move on to our next example. Please read with me. The scariest villain of all time is Darth Vader. Again, the scariest villain of all time is Darth Vader. Alright, so the adjective right here is scariest. Okay, very good. Now, next slide. Now, adjectives can do more than just modify nouns or can do more than describe nouns, all right? So they can also act as a complement to linking verbs or the verb to be. A linking verb is a verb like to feel, to seem, or to taste that describes a state of being or a sensory experience. Again, a linking verb is a verb like to feel, to seem, or to taste that describes a state of being or a sensory experience. All right, so let's take a look at our examples right over here. First example, let's read. Again, read with me. That cow sure is happy. That cow sure is happy. All right, happy here is our adjective. Now here, it smells gross in the locker room. Locker room. Again, it smells gross in the locker room. Now, our ad adjective is right over here, which is gross. All right, next we have driving is faster than walking. Driving is faster than walking. All right, our adjective here is faster. So the technical term um, for an adjective that we used earlier is called predicate adjective. Again, predicate adjective. Now let's talk about uses of adjectives. Again, uses of adjectives. Now adjectives tell the reader how much or how many. Again, adjectives tell the reader how much or how many of something you're talking about. Which thing you want or pass to you or which kind of something you want. Okay? Again, let's read um, adjectives. Tell the reader how much, how many, or something you're talking about. Which thing you want, pass to you, or which kind of something you want. So let's try to look at this example. Please use three white flowers in the arrangement. Again, read with me. Please use three white flowers in the arrangement. So here, three and white are modifying flowers. Okay? Next, often, when adjectives are used together, you should separate them with a comma or a conjunction. Again, often, when adjectives are used together, you should separate them by using comma or a conjunction. So let's try to look at these examples over here. Let's read with me. I'm looking for a small, comma, good-tempered dog to keep as a pet. Again, I'm looking for a dog or a small, good-tempered dog to keep as a pet. Okay, so small and good-tempered. Next, we have here, my new dog is small and good-tempered. My new dog is small and good-tempered. Very good. Next slide. So now, let's talk about the degrees of comparison. So adjectives come in three forms. Again, adjectives come in three forms. We have the absolute, we have the comparative, and also we have the superlative. Now, absolute adjectives describe something in its own right. Okay, absolute adjectives, they describe or do they describe something in its own right? For example, if you want to describe a guy who's cool, you can say a cool guy, a desk, you can describe them by using a messy desk, and also a mischievous cat. Let's move on. Now, 
For comparative adjectives, and surprisingly, they make a comparison between two or more things. For most one-syllable adjectives, the comparative is formed by adding the suffix er or just r if the adjective is already ending with an e. So let's take a look at this first example right over here. The absolute um, adjective we have is cool. If you want to compare two things or two nouns, we have this. John is a cooler guy than his brother. Again. John is a cooler guy than his brother. Okay? So here, we are trying to compare two guys, which is John and his brother. Next, for two syllable adjectives. Oh, by the way, how many um, syllable do we have for cool? Okay, one syllable word, cool. Now, for two syllable adjectives ending in Y, replace the Y with I and add E. So here in our uh, example right over here, let's try to read them. James has a messier desk than Chris. Again, James has a messier desk than Chris. So we're trying to compare two desks, the one that belongs with Chris and the one that belongs to James. So messier. The absolute form of adjective here is messy, which ends in Y. So we change Y to I and add ER. Cool? All right, very good. Now, for multi-syllable adjectives, multi-syllable meaning to say more than two syllables, add the word more this time. Okay, so let's try. Tiger is a more mischievous cat than my other cat, Rina. So how many syllables the adjective mischievous has? Very good, three, mischievous. All right, so we use more. We're comparing again to cats, so we use than. Don't forget the word than when you're comparing two, adject uh, two nouns. All right, now, superlative adjectives this time indicate that something has the highest degree of quality in question. Again, read with me. Superlative adjectives indicate that something has the highest degree of quality in question. Okay, now, one-syllable adjectives come or become superlatives by adding the suffix est or just st if the adjectives that, or four adjectives that already end in e. For example, cool, coolest, est, messy, instead of er for comparative, you add now est, all right? And the most mischievous cat because when you use a uh, multi-syllable adjectives add the word most for multi-syllable adjectives okay so when you use an article with a superlative adjective it will almost always be the definite article the rather than a or an using a superlative inherently indicates that you are talking about specific item or item so that's why don't forget the article the and then plus most and the base or the or our adjective right over here now here the coolest guy the messiest desk the mischievous cat opposite words big small Big, big elephant. Small, small mouse. Big and small. Tall, short. Tall, tall gentleman. Short, short boy. Tall and short. Weak. Strong, weak, weak man, strong, strong man, weak and strong, soft, hard, soft, soft cotton candy, hard, hard rock, soft and hard. 
Fast. Slow. Fast. Fast car. Slow. Slow bicycle. Fast and slow. Heavy. Light. Heavy. Heavy dinosaur. Light. Light feather. Heavy and light. Full. Empty. Full. Full cup. Empty. Empty cup. Full and empty. Dirty. Clean. Dirty. Dirty room. Clean. Clean room. Dirty and clean. Go. Stop. Go. Go sign. Stop. Stop sign. Go and stop. Open. Close. Open. Open the door. Close. Close the door. Open and close. Push. Pull. Push. Push a cart. Pull. Pull a cart. Push and pull. Wet. Dry. Wet. Wet towel. Dry. Dry towel. Wet and dry. New. Old. New. New car. Old. Old car. New and old. Up. Down. Up. Go upstairs. Down. Go downstairs. Up and down. On. Off. On. Turn on the light. Off. Turn off the light. On and off. Review. Big. Small. Tall. Short. Weak. Strong. Soft. Hard. Fast. Slow. Heavy. Light. Full. Empty. Dirty. Clean. Go. Stop. Open. Close. Push. Pull. Wet. Dry. New. Old. Up. Down. On. Off. So that was it for our day seven. I hope you enjoyed our class as much as I do. And I'll see you again next week for our day 
8 and 9. And please don't get tired of logging in and also checking your notifications in a Google Classroom. And if you have some questions, don't be shy to send me private message on our Google Classroom and also in our line support group. Guys, there's nothing wrong asking, okay? With asking me or any teacher that you have with your online classes, all right? So please, guys, stay safe. Observe social distancing and also don't forget to wash your hands and also sanitize them whenever you touch some some things around you, okay? So we are not yet out of out of danger with with uh, COVID. COVID is still here, so please be careful and please tell your parents to do so as well. So I'll see you again, again guys, in our day eight next week. So this has been Teacher Chris. And this is Fundamentals of English, course code E21101. Goodbye!